In this video, I'm going to discuss uh, two examples related to the concept of flex continuity, uh, which will hopefully give us some further insights into the uh, um, into different aspects of this flex continuity requirement, uh, and also hopefully serve as a lead-in to our um, uh, development of uh, isolated converters in future videos. Okay, so the first example problem is the the problem one is related to the uh, flyback type converters that we saw in the uh, in a previous video. Okay, so if you watch the previous videos on um, uh, flex continuity, then uh, this example problem is uh, is just a routine uh, drill type uh, problem, but it is still uh, important to discuss this uh, if only to um, differentiate this this class of converters and their um, flex continuity requirements from the other type uh, that we're going to look at in uh, problem two. Okay, so let's go through this problem. Uh, so this is the schematic of what I uh, introduced as a flyback type um, isolated converter. And we established in previous videos that for this dot configuration and this uh, direction of the diode, this is a valid circuit. Okay? And we even looked at the actual current waveform. Uh, so the primary current I1 is shown here. Uh, when the switch is on the current rises and this is the instant when the switch is turned off and um, by the energy conservation or the energy stored in the um, transformer core would make sure that um, would force the diode to connect and there is a, a jump in the secondary current and uh, and then it falls at a ramp um, at a slope uh, related to the um, the inductance and the applied voltage okay, so we have seen all that um, in previous videos the problem here is um, given the turns ratio of this transformer, n is uh, 0.5, and also given the value of uh, this peak value of um, the primary current I1, the problem is to calculate the peak value of the secondary current. Okay? So it's um, it's we'll see it's fairly simple. Okay? So what so what's the meaning of this? One is the n. Uh, the turns ratio is uh, n1 turns on the primary to n2 turns. Okay? So the n as defined here is uh, really n x n2 over n1. Okay. All right. So um, so what is given is uh, I1 peak is 5 amperes. So the value of the primary current at the instant when the switch turns off is 5 amperes. Okay. So let me call this instant as uh, say T1. Okay. Um, and I'm going to um, um, okay. So so let's look at the flex in the core phi c uh, at the instant just um, before the switch is turned off and just the picosecond before T1 and I will call that as T1 minus. So here is the complete expression for the flex in the core. Now at the instant T1 minus uh, obviously I2 is uh, 0 and I1 is, uh, is this I1 peak. So the complete expression for the flex uh, at that instant T1 minus is N1 times the I1 which is I1 peak divided by this uh, reluctance. Okay. Now by flex continuity we know that um, the so this is equal to by flex continuity the phi c at t1 plus just a picosecond after the switch has been turned off. Okay. Now so at t1 plus uh, i1 is 0 and uh, we have only i2 and I2 has a value uh, which is defined as this I2 peak which is what we are trying to estimate. Okay. So this uh, flex is N2 times the I2 peak over the same reluctance. Okay. So looking at um, these two ends, um, we see that um, the I2 peak um, shouldn't say equal to this gives I2 peak to be simply uh, N1 over N2, N1 over N2 times the I1 peak. Okay. So what is N1 over N2? Um, so N is N2 over N1, so N1 over N2 would be 1 over N, and N is 0.5 in this problem, so this would be 2, okay, 1 over 0.5. So our answer is I2 peak equals 2 times I1 peak, and I1 peak has been given as 5 amperes, so this is 2 times 5, or 10 amperes. Okay. So the peak value of I2 peak, so this value here, is 10 amperes, and that is what is required in this uh, example problem. So the things to uh, understand from this problem uh, is that the winding with um, um, higher number of turns, and that would be the primary in this case because n is 0.5, the secondary has uh, half the number of turns of the primary. 
So the winding with higher number of turns would have the lower peak current, 5 amperes. And the one which has a lower number of turns, the secondary, would have the higher current. Okay? So N1 I1 is equal to N2 I2 at the instant when there is um, a switching happening. Uh, but another important thing to note is uh, uh, in this type of uh, applications, like the flyback type, um, at a given, at any given instant, there is current in only one winding. Okay? Um, so if you look at um, the switch on time, that is this entire interval, the current in the secondary is zero, and that is because this diode we already established in previous video is reverse biased um, uh, during that instant, and there is no current I2. And... Um, when there is um, I2, um, that is when the switch is turned off and obviously there is no primary current when I2 is uh, has a magnitude. Okay? Um, so, so this is leading to the next uh, um, example problem which covers um, the type of converters where at any given time um, many windings, at least um, two or more windings, can have uh, current simultaneously. Okay? So under that condition, what are the implications and what are the requirements on flex continuity? So here is the schematic of the example problem uh, 2. Now, this is not uh, a standard isolated converter. Uh, but, uh, you know, not, not having studied uh, the different isolated converters in detail, um, I thought this would be uh, a good example to uh, illustrate some of the key concepts related to this this concept of load current component, magnetizing current component, and uh, uh, the flex continuity under this context. Okay. So let's. Uh, so this is the uh, circuit, and it is given that. Um, um, so you have you have this transformer, and uh, the conveniently the turns ratio is one is to one, and uh, so the primary is being switched by this MOSFET. The input source is hundred volts. And the secondary is connected to uh, simply a resistance uh, of uh, 50 ohms. Okay. The magnetizing inductance referred to the primary side uh, is given as uh, L primary 100 microhenry. And um, the uh, switching characteristics, meaning the um, switching frequency is 100 kilohertz. And the duty cycle, the ratio of the on interval to the total period is uh, 0.1. Okay. And uh, the problem is to calculate uh, and draw the waveforms of various uh, currents mainly. The secondary current, the magnetizing current, um, which is internal uh, to this component, and uh, the primary current, which is the sum of um, load current and the magnetizing current components, and uh, the output voltage. Now, recall from our um, development of transformer video, um, now, if we, the, the flex in the core is completely decided by what is the applied voltage to one of the windings. Mm -hmm. so, um, if, so if there is an induced EMF in another winding and there is a load connected to that winding and because of that there is a load current, um, then the, um, in order to um, retain this relationship between the applied voltage and the flex, the, um, there will be additional currents drawn from the, say, the primary winding to which this voltage source is connected such that the flex due to that additional current, which is called really as the load current component, that goes to completely cancel the flex created by the actual load current in the other winding. Okay, so we, we have studied so that. that is the uh, flex component um, due to the load current. So that is the, in the um, secondary. That is explained that in this, uh, in this state, can flex component due to the load current, load current secondary component in this case uh, of this the ohms. primary winding. Okay. So... Um, so there was an initial magnetizing current and uh, considering the load current component, I primary is uh, given by the magnetizing current I mag plus the load current component, uh, which I will call this as um, I secondary, but referred to the primary side, okay. just, just scaled by the turns ratio. And that is the load current component, load component of primary current. So we have studied that. Now, from the uh, uh, from the requirement on the flex continuity, um, so we need to understand that um, the flex is only due to the magnetizing current component. Okay. Uh, so the there is no flex due to the load current component because the flex created by the actual I secondary in secondary winding and the I secondary prime in the primary winding, those two are in the opposite direction and they cancel each other, leaving just the I mag to uh, account for the complete flex in the core. Okay? So therefore, 
the flex continuity requirement simply means that this net flex, which is only due to the magnetizing current, only that needs to be continuous. I actually simulated this example problem and these are the uh, simulation results that we obtained from uh, Plex. Okay. Uh, but what we're going to do here is uh, actually analyze this problem, solve it, and uh, make sure that these simulation results uh, make sense and um, the various um, peak and peak values, slopes, etc. they match our, uh, our analysis. Okay. So, um, so let's begin with uh, the, the various timings. Okay. So we know that the switching frequency is 100 kilohertz, which means the switching period, uh, Ts, is um, 1 over 100k, which is 10 microseconds. And it is given that the duty cycle is uh, 0.1. Therefore, T on is 0.1 times 10 microsecond is 1 microsecond. So those are the values here. So from here till to this point, that is 1 Ts, that's 10 microsecond. Okay, so I have run the simulation till it reaches steady state. So, so this uh, 4.98, uh, 10 to the minus 3, that can be the start of one cycle. And this is the end of one cycle. So that's 10 microsecond. Okay. And the on interval, which is uh, just this duration, so that is uh, one microsecond as we established. Okay. So that uh, that matches. Then uh, let's initially consider the on interval when the switch is on. Okay. So when the switch is on, the um, voltage across the primary winding, V primary, is same as the input voltage, DC source, which is 100 volts. Okay. So just during the on interval, V primary is 100. And because the turns ratio is 1 is to 1, the secondary voltage is also exactly 100 during the on interval. And um, and since the load is connected to this um, secondary 100 volts, there is a load current, I secondary, and uh, that is given by, um, so I secondary during the on interval, um, during the on interval would be this uh, 100 volts divided by the 50 ohms, and that's 2 amperes. Okay, then let's uh, verify that with our simulation results. The waveform at the top, that is the uh, secondary current, I secondary. And if you look at during the on interval, which is this period, the magnitude is exactly 2 amperes. So that matches with our analysis. Okay. So let's go ahead and um, during the same on interval, this 1 microsecond interval, let's look at the magnetizing current, I mag. Okay. So uh, if you look at the primary, um, we are applying 100 volts across this uh, primary side referred magnetizing inductance of 100 microhenry. So the current would be um, a linear, um, linearly rising waveform with a slope given by V over L. Okay. So the slope M is uh, M is V over L, and that would be 100 during the on interval 100 volts divided by 100 microhenry, the L primary. Uh, that results in uh, one one um, ampere per microsecond. Yeah, that's the slope at which the magnetizing current rises. And uh, if you look at um, the this magnetizing current waveform from simulation, you can see that this is a linearly rising waveform. And uh, in one microsecond, as per our derivation here, it should have risen by exactly one ampere. Okay? So the magnitude of the peak value is one ampere from the simulation, and that matches well. Okay? Uh, continuing on the same on interval, if you look at the primary current, which is the third waveform, um, so we saw that I primary is, um, I should not have erased that, I primary is uh, the I mag, which we saw in the second waveform, uh, plus the I secondary um, reflected to the primary. Okay. Now the turns ratio is 1 is to 1, so this I secondary prime is same as the I secondary, okay, which itself was 2 amperes as, uh, as we established. Okay. So the primary current would be the sum of these two. Um, so the load current component has 2 amperes, to that you're adding um, a linearly rising waveform pr from 0 to 1. So it goes from 2 to uh, 3 amperes at this point. Okay, so that's the total primary current. Okay, so then we come to the uh, probably the most interesting instant in this uh, switching period, and that is when the uh, MOSFET is uh, just turned off. Okay. Now, just prior to the turn off of the MOSFET, we know that the magnetizing current was entering the dot in the primary winding. And uh, from, for flex continuity, we know that once this current is interrupted in the primary, what we need is a current that enters the dot on the secondary winding. Okay? So that would be uh, in the, the opposite direction of how we have defined I secondary. So this is the required direction of I secondary once 
the switch is turned off. Okay. Um, then the question is, what should be the magnitude of the secondary current right at the instant when the switch is turned off? Okay. So that brings us to the um, the most important point that uh, I've been laboring to make uh, throughout this video. Okay. Uh, and that is, um, if you look at the primary current, and this current here we establish it's 3 amperes. Okay. So the point is, um, it is not this entire 3 amperes that needs to be supported on the secondary side when the switch is turned off. Okay. The reason is, of these 3 amperes, 2 amperes went to cancel the, um, it was a load current component that went to cancel the 2 amperes of the secondary load current. And the flex was, um, um, was only due to the 1 ampere of the magnetizing current here. 1 ampere. Okay. So it is just this 1 ampere that needs to be supported at the switch turn off instant by a current in the secondary winding. Okay. So it is conveniently 1 is to 1. Therefore, the secondary current right at the instant when the switch is turned off entering the dot would be exactly 1 ampere. Okay. That is confirmed by our simulation results of the secondary current I secondary. So this magnitude here is exactly minus one minus one ampere at the turn off instant. Okay. All right. Then uh, what happens beyond that turn off instant? Okay. So we know that the primary is there is no current in the primary. The switch is turned off, so we can almost completely ignore the primary uh, side and focus only on the secondary side. So what we have here is simply an LR circuit with some initial current on the inductor. So the L, uh, because of the 1 is to 1 turns ratio, L secondary is also exactly 100 microhenry. Okay. So the current would come down with a time constant tau of L over R, tau of L over R. So that is uh, 100 micro over um, 50 uh, ohms, 100 microhenry over 50 ohms. Uh, so that is this uh, time constant tau. And uh, I've purposely chosen the tau to be well below my turn off uh, duration such that the current comes to zero before I turn on the switch again. Okay. Um, I'm going to post the simulation file and you can actually play around with the different values of L and R and so you get different time constants and see the uh, impact of that on the operation of this particular converter. Okay, uh, so and um, uh, during the turn off interval, the um, secondary current we just established is just an L0 circuit and uh, this current comes down exponentially starting from this minus 1 ampere. The magnetizing current, the flex in the core is now only due to the secondary current because there is no primary current and uh, therefore the magnetizing current is exactly same as the secondary current with the appropriate uh, polarity consideration. Then the final waveform that uh, we needed was uh, that of the output voltage, the voltage across this load resistance of 50 ohms. Okay. Now we already know the uh, secondary current from our previous um, uh, slide. Secondary current is shown here and that is the current through the resistance. So simply the uh, this current times the um, resistance would give you the uh, output voltage. So um, during the on interval is going to be 2 times 50, 100 volts. And we, we expect that because um, if this is 1 is to 1 and if the primary voltage is 100 because the switch applies uh, this 100 volts directly to the primary winding, the secondary voltage will also be 100 volts. So that's consistent. And um, right at the instant when the switch is turned off, we know that the current in this resistance is negative 1 ampere. So the voltage would be minus uh, 50 volts and then it will come down exponentially and reach zero uh, well before the turn on of the next switching period. Okay. That's exactly what we see here. This is the on interval 1 microsecond, it is 100 volts, goes to minus 50 volts right at the turn off instant, comes down exponentially and reaches zero prior to the turn on. Okay, okay and as I mentioned, I posted the uh, Plex simulation file and here is the schematic. Uh, one thing to note is uh, if you're using this uh, component called ideal transformer in Plex, uh, you can specify the turns ratio, uh, you can have many number of windings, you can specify that and you can specify the turns ratio for each of those windings. Um, but the magnetizing inductance, that has to be put as a separate inductance uh, as shown here. So this L1 is really the magnetizing inductance referred to the primary side and that is put as an external component. That's the only difference, the, rest, the other differences are only the various meters that I've put 
to monitor those currents and the voltages. Okay. So I would encourage you to uh, go through this simulation, vary different parameters, and like I mentioned, vary the tau and see what impact it has on the on the operation.